Hello, this is Leanne McGlynn with McGlynn Institute Neonatal. Today in our procedural skills series, we will discuss umbilical line placement. Umbilical lines can be used for a variety of reasons in neonates. The artery can be used for arterial blood sampling, arterial pressure monitoring, and exchange transfusion. Whereas the umbilical vein can be used for emergent intravenous access or prolonged parenteral nutrition, long-term IV drugs, hyperosmolar IV fluids, irritating IV meds, difficult or limited IV access, or fluid restriction. Additionally, umbilical venous catheters can be used for venous blood sampling, exchange transfusions, as well as monitoring central venous pressures. There are also contraindications for the use of arterial or venous umbilical catheters. These contraindications include umphalitis, peritonitis or necrotizing intracolitis, as well as umphalocele or gastroschisis, and in the UVC, portal venous hypertension. Additionally, you should avoid a UAC if there's evidence of local vascular compromise in the lower limbs or buttocks. Now, as a fetus, these vessels served to bring nutrients and oxygen to the baby and remove waste and carbon dioxide. And typically, there are two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein. In order to access these vessels, you'll first need to gather your equipment and supplies. You will first need to gather a hat, mask, sterile gown, and sterile gloves. Next, you'll need a catheter tray containing small curved scissors, curved mosquito hemostats, curved Kelly clamp, angled scissors, iris curves forceps, iris straight forceps, gauze 4x4 and 2x2, needle holder, sterile towels, scalpel, 4.0 silk suture with curved needle, cord tie or umbilical tape, three-way stopcock. You'll also need heparinized flush solution, antiseptic solution per unit protocol, and some 3ml syringes. Additional items you may need are Luro stub adapters. You'll also need catheters, 3.5 or 5 French, single or double lumen, depending on the type of umbilical line you plan to place, as well as linens in order to position the patient and prevent them from entering the sterile field. There are multiple methods for calculating or measuring the depth of insertion for your umbilical lines, with the most common for the UAC being the weight times three plus nine plus the length of the stump, with the UVC being that same measurement divided by two. While gathering your supplies and calculating your insertion depth, you'll want the patient to be positioned where the arms and legs are restrained and can stay out of the sterile field and that the umbilicus area is open and free from any leads, wires, or adapters. This positioning ensures that the patient will not disrupt the procedure and that it remains sterile. While the baby is being prepared, you can sterilely draw up your heparinized saline and then make sure to flush each port and every line of the umbilical lines you plan to place. Now that the baby is positioned, lines are primed, everyone around has done a timeout, you can then proceed to cleaning the umbilicus while an assistant holds that umbilical cord up. You'll want to clean not only the cord, but the skin around it. You'll then lay your sterile drapes. Once the drapes are in place, you can then tie the cord with the umbilical tape you want to make sure to get around the base and get the skin that's at the umbilicus. At this point, make sure to pull tight as you cut through the umbilical cord. You can then find the vessels, the two arteries and one vein. The arteries are typically thicker walled while the vein is thinner. You can then begin to place your umbilical catheter. This is a UV catheter that's being placed here. You have already determined the length. Once you reach that depth, you'll then want to make sure you get blood return and that it flushes easily. At this point, you can now then begin to dilate the arteries. You may need to start with the iris forceps and just one side of them and slowly dilate the artery. Once you've done that, then you can begin to place both of them in and dilate the artery slowly. You'll need to be very patient. 
Once you've done that, you can even hold the iris forceps in place as you pass the line through and between those iris forceps as seen here. Once you reach your desired depth, again, you'll want to check for blood return. At this point, you can put a soft suture in on each of the lines and get your x-ray to confirm placement. To accurately interpret catheter placement on an x-ray, you'll need to know the path that the catheter typically takes. The UV goes in and straight up toward the liver and toward the patient's right side or the left side of the x-ray, whereas the UA goes down and up and typically lies toward the patient's left or the right side of the x-ray. As seen here, placement is typically optimal with the UVC above the diaphragm, T8 to 10, and the UAC in optimal position, T6 to 9. You can also have low-lying UVs, which would be L4 to 5, and often UACs are not considered safe in a low-lying position due to the risk of mesenteric and renal emboli. After making adjustments as needed on catheter depth, and confirming that depth and placement on x-ray, you can then suture each of the lines in place. As with any invasive procedure in the NICU, complications can occur. The UAC can cause ischemia, thrombosis, emboli, vasospasm, hemorrhage, infection, vascular perforation, or there can be catheter migration. Additionally, the UVC could have infection, hemorrhage, air emboli, thrombosis, cause necrotizing intercolitis, be located in the liver, or migrate further. Being particularly vigilant is very important in order to identify or prevent these potential complications. Now it's your turn. Let us know how this video helped you in your actual clinical practice. Looking for an NRP, procedural skills, or simulation-based training course? McGlynn Institute Neonatal has you covered. Give us a call or text at 704-728-4961 or email Dr. McGlynn at drmcglynn at mcglynninstitute.com. Look forward to hearing from you soon.